Good afternoon, folks. Welcome aboard another Sofa Safari. My name is Brad. Got Trev today tracking, Steve behind the camera. Once again, Janine on comms. And uh, the other vehicle is going to be Ryan, Tom, and Brandon. So uh, we're on foot a bit today, as well. We're going to not be doing any walks, but we're going to do some tracks and signs again since it was such a hit. Um, yeah, so um, once again, just before we start, just remember to feel free to ask any questions as we're going along and of course um, when we do swap over to the next vehicle be sure to swap over as well at the same time all right i see some some uh, dung over here i don't know if uh, you can get down there Stuart, get a look a little bit subtle actually it blends in quite well with the surrounding area you can see it's quite light in color i've also got a little bit of a darker one over here slightly darker um, this is from a scrub hair, a very common little lagomorph that we get around this area. Um, they eat grass, um, but what's quite interesting is that they practice coprophagia. I'm not sure if any of you folks are familiar with the term coprophagia. It's basically a very primitive form of rumination where the animal will re-ingest its own feces. Um, essentially just re-absorbing um, those nutrients for a second time and processing it again, getting as much back as it can. Uh, also some added uh, vitamins uh, in the fermentation process as well. Um, so also benefits there. And then once it's finished eating it for a second time, it will defecate a, a brown pellet and it leaves that alone. So it eats the green gelatinous one. I don't know if any of you have had hamsters before. Hamsters also practice coprophagia. Good afternoon everybody, hope you're all doing well. So the next next signs I'll be walking through the bush and you come across an area like this and the first distinct is obviously the droppings but there's two distinct markings um, you can see over here and over here and this is from a blue a male blue wildebeest and the reason that I say it's a male um, in that he will use this area to mark a bit of a territory so he'll use these droppings as one his urine a scent He'll actually roll his body in this area to give off any scent as well. But one of the big ones that he, the main ones that he does is through the hooves. It's called pedal glands. So in this particular area that is often referred to as a lek, he'll actually take his hooves down and do this. And that actually releases a scent, as you can see here in these marks. So that if a group of females come into the area, they'll pick up his scent and know that there is a dominant male in this area. Um, and, know that, and this is how he'll also keep this area protected against other males um, often in soft sand you'll even find in trees around you rubbings um, from their foreheads to get any scent of, uh, of him left behind to show his dominance those are the two marks there that i was talking about from the pedal glands of his hoof so what we thought this afternoon uh, we started off with two interesting signs um, Instead of doing tracks this week, we're going to do three different dropping types for you guys to try identify. Brad and I are going to give you little clues and then uh, drop us your answers and let's see what you guys come up with. Let's start on the first one here, Brad. Alright, so here is our first clue. Quite an obvious little section here. Um, really a midden essentially. So this animal that has been defecating here has been coming back and forward here constantly. Uh, using this area as a, as a form of a territorial marker or a signpost uh, occasionally females might defecate here as well leaving a scent uh, leaving essentially a message for the male um, so this is a territorial advertisement and it's a fairly common animal that we get out here <laughs> and uh, what's also quite cool is um, there's a bit of a challenge that occasionally we can't resist when we encounter these <laughs> Uh, we call it the Bokdrol Spuk Kompetisi, which translates to Buck Poo Spitting Competition. And I've got the championship belt. <laughs> so he thinks. <laughs> you haven't been to Africa or experienced Africa properly until you've done this. So we, we, Brad thinks he's the champion, but we'll just make him feel good about that. Um, he wants to challenge us, go challenge me to, well, I've got to challenge him because he claims he's got the, the belt of droppings. Um, so we're going to give it a go in that way. Um, no wet ones here, man. Oh, you see, he's already complaining. <laughs> um, 
I'll go first. See? In the mark. Mmm. So good. Okay, ready? Let's see what you got. <coughs> Yo! That could be a record. Choose whatever was today. Buckle under pressure now, bro. You build up a bit. No, don't wait it down. Okay. Looks like I still keep that belt there. That, that, the belt <laughs> is still yours, my friend. <laughs> Little personal victory there. Moving on swiftly. <laughs> So our next um, uh, question in terms of droppings, it's, um, it's often found around the base of the tree. The predominant part of the dropping is on the ground. Um, you may find some pieces that are splattered literally onto the bush. Um, this is a grazer, you can see the grass. And he's a simple stomached animal, meaning he only has one stomach chamber, so the droppings are very coarse and also quite commonly found splattered around the leaves in that there and that's 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 your key here when you start seeing this in the tree all right and then my last question these droppings over here you can see the shape of them very diagnostic um, when it was wet you can actually see how it landed just really just splattered really quite a, um, a very fine texture in it as well so it is a, a ruminant um, quite a large animal um, we do get the domestic variety um, of course it has a very similar looking dropping um, that's your that's your clue otherwise um, no, they're also quite dangerous <laughs> Okay, we have some questions uh, from the uh, Boktrol Spuch Competition. Most importantly, who won, Trevor? Um, Brad is still the champion today. <laughs> <laughs> still got the belt. <laughs> and then there's a, a few guesses uh, and some uh, nominations for some of these questions already. Yeah. Uh, so keep those coming through. Some look like they are on the right path. So yeah. We'll uh, reveal all at the end, I think. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll give you guys some time to think about it. Um, but yeah, let's head out there. It's a little bit windy this afternoon, so we decided we're going to drive down a beautiful drainage line. It's so, so pretty this time of the day to uh, drive down the riverbeds. Let's go see what we can find. All right, let's do it. Quite a bit of green in this area. Um, this tree that's found in this particular area is the evergreen. Uh, it's called a guari. So it'll always be green, but the thing is, it's not very palatable, so animals usually skip it, but very good for shade. Um, unless animals get desperate, they might eat it. Very, very high in tannin. Pickers calling. Okay. Often, as we keep mentioning of the weeks of sofa safaris, um, when we see ox pickers, if you see them flying and calling, it's our natural bush warning system. If they do drop, always investigate it as well as being on foot. It's an early warning system for us. They flew over, perhaps maybe landed in a 
tree there, but we're going to head down the drainage line to avoid the wind and uh, let's see what they landed on. Trees are providing a lot of the foliage for the for the browsers and animals. So the density around the, the drainage lines and of course the rivers tends to be a bit more. Um, yeah, let's see what we find. Have a look as a small example of it where you can see how the sand has been dug out here now often in the dry times of the year you will the elephants predominantly will come into riverbeds where they can't find water and there's something with elephants that also give us a few nightmares at the lodges that they love clean water i suppose you can't blame them so often what the elephants will do they'll come to the riverbeds possibly can actually smell the water out below below the sand and they'll actually dig the water out suck it out with their trunk and disperse a bit and then nice clean water filters through um, you can actually see the early tracks here where perhaps a young bull elephant came and investigated but maybe by this time of the year um, it's a little bit too dry you can see he's dug a little bit but not too much and you know even along the sand river where the, the our perennial river is i'll even start digging on the banks looking for some nice clean water now as we go down these riverbeds you notice the tree canopies and you know um, this time of the afternoon perhaps baboons roosting vervet monkeys while we're driving around we've actually been working very hard in this area during the day looking for a female leopard um, you know we've spoken a lot about Tlangisa that we hadn't seen her in three weeks I mentioned it last week we had a glimpse of her um, two days ago actually and, and it seems like she's moved north of the river so a lot going on at the moment in these particular tracks we're not sure who it is uh, possibly Basile or her um, so we're going to work this area a little bit, listening for alarm calls, perhaps, um, you know, uh, like I said, we've, we've been tracking all morning and all afternoon without any luck. But um, let's continue, let's keep trying our luck and see what we can find. You thirsty, Brad? I don't know about that particular hole, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah. You have drank water from the riverbeds before. Yeah, can, can do. Just gotta be a little bit more patient than the elephants and scoop out that dirty water a lot more and then you can drink that water as well. But uh, you might have to adjust a bit too and a little bit of bacteria in there.
folks might be able to see it over here this particular le female leopard track over here she's walked up the road here so this is the area we've been working quite hard on during the day um, and she seems to have been very very busy you know um, size wise we can tell it's a female the males will be a little bit bigger um, it's quite windy as well so to age it you know the loose sand particles on top of it all these little factors that we work in you know, Brad, Stewie and I have been walking these tracks for the last couple of hours and we're hoping to hear an alarm call but she seems to have been a very busy leopard she's walked up this road down this road all over the show so sometimes these are the challenges we face but always fun challenges we're always trying to put these puzzles together um, and there again you can see the track the three lobes and then the toes size wise first this is definitely a female the next track there and as you come along sometimes you can see they're incredibly difficult and this is where we admire our trackers so much is that while we're driving along i'll point the track out there i'm sure you might be able to pick it up on the camera but you try to see that while you're sitting on the on the track as he's driving at 20 k's an hour and that's always huge admiration for our trackers who have the ability to do that and then this track over here seems to be a little bit better um so yeah let's hope while we while you guys are on safari with us this afternoon that we can we can try and find it hmm. yeah, let's head up a little bit all right so that let's see if we get anything cool sounds good A question here after you mentioned uh, Sangisa about whether or not we think she might have lost the cub. Um, just judging by her behavior, um, the guys that found her at the river, she was actually around the euphorbia male, and there was a lot of marking, scenting, bit of interaction, but nothing to say that uh, or to show that they were actually mating. Um, she did have a few injuries on her legs, so I think she has been. Um, uh, fighting over territory and you know right now we have quite a few nomadic males in between her territory so it's almost females that have got cubs at the moment there's a lot of pressure on them and Raven's core to to us is the dominant male he's really got his work cut out and and that's possibly one of the negative effects of having such a large territory you know along the river at the moment there's actually a bit of chaos with all these young nomadic males and for a female to have cubs without a secure dominant male there with these nomadic males it's not a good thing because I'll kill her cubs and she doesn't have that security so sadly I do think perhaps her cub is gone but we're not a hundred percent sure um, so we're still hopeful uh, but at least we've seen her you know we hadn't seen her in three weeks and yesterday afternoon was the first time that we had seen her in three weeks so we know she's alive and well um, but no guarantee that the cub is around but we're going to keep working on it and let's hope that there's the news improves yeah never know So at this time of the year, of course, being so cool, it's very possible that these leopards will be also moving around during the daytime. It's also quite possible why we've got so many tracks going all over the place as these leopards are moving uh, regularly throughout the day.
Good afternoon guys. Welcome to another edition of Surf Safari with myself Brandon, Ryan on the tracker seat and Tom behind the camera there. And as you can see we uh, we have finally found a buffalo that is close by and that we can actually see far away like last week. And uh, we've been sitting with this guy for quite some time. This is the most relaxed bull buffalo. Alright, a bull that we would normally call a dugger boy because of the mud that he's been wallowing in, that he's been rolling, and you can see on his back legs and on his bum area. And the dugger refers to the mud um, in uh, the local language. All right, so directly translated, the mud boy. Okay, old bull buffalo, all by his lonesome here. And in the background, we've also got some hippopotamus. There's a couple of hippos taking it nice and easy in the late afternoon light. Starting to get a little bit cooler now, which is going to be ideal for them to cli start climbing out and start uh, looking for places to graze. Uh, I believe Tom is zooming in on the bird there for you, as you can see, wading through the shadows. Trotters. The bird that has incredibly long toes that allows them to do is walk on the water plants. So we may have seen them walking on lily pads and, and, and things like that. Right. Um, that's what he's doing or what he can do. Although at the moment feeding in the, in the shallows. Um, one thing that's quite odd uh, about jacanas and quite unique to them is when it comes to the youngsters, the female has very little You can see the long toes as he took off. Right, but yeah, the, the female helps with absolutely nothing. Right, she'll find a, a suitable partner, a male. Uh, they, they will court and breed. He builds a nest, uh, usually on the water plants. Okay. Uh, she lays the eggs, she leaves. And it's all up to the male to sit on the eggs, hatch the chicks, and then look after them. Now, it can be quite dangerous growing up running on water plants so we find the youngsters have got a few things that they can do if they feel threatened uh, if they feel threatened from below if a large catfish or a small crocodile is trying to catch them they run to dad and he'll pick them up under his wings so you see him running around with the little feet of the youngsters hanging out or if they feel like a bird of prey or something like that's trying to catch them they'll jump into the water and they submerge and they stick their little beaks out and they snorkel which is quite cool to see Buffalo decided that he's had enough. He's trying to move off there. Just before he goes, guys, a, a question here. Is it unusual for the buffalo to be alone? Um, not unusual, uh, especially when bull buffalo start reaching older age. Um, there's different societies of buffalo. You've got very large breeding groups, which are males, a couple of larger males, quite a few younger males, and then mostly made up of females. Oh, just shot, uh, shot go back onto him all right now what he's doing there guys i'll answer that question in a second he's, uh, he's busy rubbing his bosses it's it's actually a couple of reasons why he would do that where he horns bushes and trees and things um first reason there's a particular type of moth that likes to lay eggs on uh, the horns of animals we call it a horn, a horn worm moth and the larvae hatch out and actually feed on the keratin well, he's got a little bit of life in him they hatch, uh, they hatch out and they actually feed on the keratin, which uh, on a live animal is not often seen because hopefully the males do that. They actually rub their horns up and down and get rid of the eggs. But on you see it a lot on dead, um, on skulls and things that uh, the horns are starting to degrade. And you see the offings of these horn worms, which then feed on the keratin. And number two, in case there is another buffalo or other buffalo in the vicinity in the area, it's a visual display to show how big and strong and how dominant he is okay basically like a guy at the gym with a boxing bag okay smashing it he's busy showing off showing all his muscles a bit okay now going back to him being alone it is not uncommon for buffalo to be alone especially these big old bulls as they go through their lifespans 
they go through stages of sexual regression which means that the males will take longer to recuperate between breeding bouts okay so as they get um they reach into the prime of their life they might only be walking with the herds for maybe three four months and then leaving the herds and especially going into old age even though they are more than acceptable as a breeding partner they'll spend a lot shorter periods of time in with the herds longer periods of time away from the herds with other males and even to the point where they now are being separated completely and then become solitary all right and that is because of testosterone levels it takes longer for testo testosterone levels to build up all right now with a bull like that he's saying okay i'm done with the herds i'm done with the males he's just he, he become very cantankerous in their old age all right he doesn't want to um, uh, interact with others there's also the, the fact that with other with other males being in a, in a in a bachelor group there's a lot of competition amongst them a lot of uh, throwing around of testosterone so um, he, he's now past the point of that he's an old bull he doesn't need that in his life all right and that's why he's separated and he often becomes they become a lot more solitary in that way okay guys and then just another question that popped up earlier um just relative to obviously us spending a bit of time here this afternoon um are there any crocodiles in this watering hole so there is a crocodile in the water hole we've actually been watching him for quite some time and he's come all the way from the other side to between us and the hippos but he's submerged and he hasn't come back up so we're not too sure what he's doing um, at one stage it did look like he was having right. a Some. You guys can see the elephants there on the other side. They did come here this morning with only two. Oh no, there we go. Should we come there? Yeah. Should we go around that side? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. But there's Impala shouting behind us here. You hear them? So let's go join the, the elephants. Let's just keep an ear on. Let's just move the cross over to the left there. Yeah. I saw all the bream go shooting into the shallows. So we're just going to head around and see if we can see those uh, Ellie's a bit closer. But I'm sure as you heard there, Brandon mentioning, we do have some Impala alarm calling in the distance. So we're going to keep an ear out for that and uh, see what happens. Right, let's just get a direction quickly before I go to those involved. Just shouting just here.
help us and go towards where we heard those Impala alarm calling. And they're going to start having a look there. They've been tracking a leopard for the whole afternoon. Very possibly could coincide with the tracks that they've been following. So let's hope and see. Maybe we're lucky with that, or they're lucky with that, uh, with that leopard. First female that's trailing. That's really nice. That young bull's got a bit of takeaway. Boons are still going in. Listen out for those alarm calls for the guys and we'll direct them. Those baboons are going crazy. Yeah, those baboons are going absolutely berserk. Do you copy those, uh, Fene? Yeah, I think they're going berserk. Okay, yeah, we're going to come and join you in the area. Um, we'll come and see if we can give you a hand there. Let's go give them a hand. What do you reckon? We'll loop around from the side and see. Or do Scotia Pan Road itself.
bachelor group of Impala guys. Quite a lot of bachelors here. And then mingled up is a breeding herd. There's females, no horns. Let's sit with them for a little bit and we can listen out. given us the last couple of days exceedingly high winds um, the winds have died off slightly but it is still very confusing for the Impala um, as you can imagine the wind will bring in scents but it also unfortunately covers um, sound okay as well as movement so your Impala instead of spreading out and feeding as they, they normally do are now all bunched up okay as a defense um, and as you can see they're quite nervous quite twitchy going around with all these bushes and trees waving around in the, in the wind so they're um, on high alert because this is ideal conditions for uh, something like a leopard to stalk in close and make a kill really nice with the buffalo now guys it's the same bull he's just moved from one dam to another pan waterfall pan here we're just commenting how nicely it's holding water whereas a lot of the smaller pans have dried out already this is um, one pan that is actually holding water incredibly well but on the buffalo it's very clear which we've been hoping to show you are ox peckers okay this particular type is the red bulled ox pecker let's see if he comes close and we can get even closer named because of their red bull and they are often referred to as the tick bird okay they are a species that feeds on ticks okay however um, it's a little bit more sinister than what it sounds the the, the the ticks unfortunately are allowed to cause the damage the ox peckers are not after the ticks that are young and are slim and skinny that haven't filled up on blood because they actually are after the blood protein Okay, so they're waiting for the tick to get all nice and fat and juicy before they crush the tick, pull it off and drink the blood. Okay, they are um, a species though that does do good because in the general scheme of things they actually lessen the amount of ticks. Monkeys are shouting. Yeah. You guys can maybe hear guys, the there's monkeys that have joined the baboons shouting there as well. So we've got monkeys and baboons shouting down.
So guys, um, just to end off with those ox peckers, just to let you guys know a little bit more about them, those ox peckers, they're after the fat juicy ticks by crushing them up and drinking the blood. They're not actually helping the animal directly. However, they do slow down population growth. So by crushing up those ticks that are about to drop off and lay eggs, they're obviously stopping that. So they slow down that breeding rate. Find this English Brad, do you copy? You guys copy the encounter? We're heading to the area, we're going north of you, eh? Yeah, we're going to come to the car. There's a car telling me now. this leopard um, we're going to try and help them keep it it sounds like he's moving up towards us here um, and let's see if we can uh, get a view of him is it to the east or west of the junction west west of the junction then come straight north okay he sounds like he's coming up towards draw drive a bit Very close to the junction, right? Beautiful 
young male leopard grass. It's a bit of a feed. Looking a little bit lean. It's been broken at some stage. It's funny because it's the same as his mother. Scotia has also got a kink in the They're looking for what caused this commotion where there's that much activity with the alarm calls. There's a very good chance that something's been killed, or they might get the reason for all the activity. And instead of a kill, they find the predator and trail the predator, hoping that he takes him to a kill or he kills something and they can steal it from him. chance against two large hyenas so he might turn and run or he might actually go up a tree let's see what happens if they pick up on him and they rush him I think they've got to see him first no, he might just walk straight past <laughs> <laughs> if he stays still enough they might not see him <laughs> Go, go. He's coming out onto that Kiri West two track, but much further west now. Um, and yeah, place. just by this uh, this this dense Tambuti thicket. Right, guys. We're going to be handing over to the other team. They're just down the bank here we can't go further down here we're going to hand over to them they're going to take over and carry on with him for a bit thank you so much for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next
Quite a young leopard. So this um, particular young male is um, in a dominant male's territory at the moment. So he has to be very careful how he behaves. He's not going to be marking his territory whatsoever, but he needs to be very sneaky. If he does get caught in this area by the dominant resident male, he might be in trouble. So he has to be a little bit more cautious. A lot of the viewers are interested um, sort of in the lineage of these leopards. This is the Tavangumi male. He's the son of the Scotia female. In Scotia, her mother was in Tavangkunzi, right? We can go around over here. It's a, it's a beautiful spot here. Okay. That tree. He's, yeah, he's looking up. Perhaps maybe he'll climb it, but let's see. You can see as he's walking through this area along the river this is the prime territory of the Ravensport male so being a young nomadic male he's got to continually watch his back as you can see as he walks through and, and checks he's always very cautious
river, they're not a huge fan of the, the water. Generally rocky outcrops they might jump across. They've got an incredible leap, so let's wait and see. Where's a photographer's dream to be on safari and see a leopard jump across the water? Question on whether the hyenas are still trailing him. I don't see any around. I think they might have uh, lost interest. Yeah. all these other animals could give an alarm sound which will of course disturb him but also alert any other predators that there could be something here in the case of hyenas maybe something they can steal maybe the territorial leopard some intruder so yeah he has to be also very careful that uh, he doesn't alert any attention from the other animals if you watch the tip of the tail twitching all the time you can see he's watching something or just making a decision Often you see that with cats when they, even your domestic cat is part of the same family. And when they're eyeing something out, you can see he's looking at the bottom of the bank there. We can't see there. You just watch the tail twitch, which often indicates he's interested in something. by his body language now he may have seen something but again being a young nomadic male we haven't seen him much along the river very cautious and let's go down you might want to cross here <laughs> could be even the first time he's arrived here huh? yeah. Playing games with us. signal is uh, good at all. Uh, dropping down into the river sometimes a bit tricky but I think I don't know if we're going to be able to follow him now. Uh, he's chosen quite a quite a route there um, but wow what a great way to uh, end off this sofa safari. Um, I hope you folks enjoyed it 
and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. Oh, of course, I forgot to mention the the droppings. Yeah, so um, yeah, the first uh, dropping was Impala. It was actually an Impala dung midden. Second dropping was a Hippo, and the droppings uh, hit the fan. That's why it was all on the bush as well. <laughs> and um, the last one was a Buffalo. So um, yeah. Well done for those of you who did get it. Otherwise, uh, we'll probably do some more tracking exercises at another stage again. And yeah, hope you enjoyed that and look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care, folks. Bye, everybody. Hope you really enjoyed it. We had so much fun. Really glad that we managed to work out who, what the alarm calls were for. Have a blessed week and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.